Hello, I'm Entrilisim and welcome to Let's Play Niche, a genetic survival game. Niche, for those of you who don't know, is a game about trying to breed together your strange cat, dog, furry creatures and trying to get the best traits by what is effectively selective breeding using uh, dominant and recessive alleles uh, in your genes. So it uses kind of this basic biology to try and make it so that you can breed them together to try and get the best traits. And then you're trying to selectively breed these different lineages of your animals. It's a really enjoyable game and I played it a little bit on the channel when it was back in beta. Now it's fully out, we're in version 1.0.1, it came out a few days ago. We're going to give it a go. So, uh, you can see we've got our old save here but it is uh, incompatible. So new game, we're not going to do story mode, we're going to do sandbox mode. And we're going to do... Medium islands. I think medium. We could do hard, but I'm going to go medium for now. And then we're going to do... First snow, rainforest, burning savannah. I'm really tempted by doing something snowy. Let's do something simple for now. Maybe we can migrate later if they still allow you to migrate. We're going to do grass mingle. We'll name this... Let's uh, see. Okay. Done. Let's do it. So, you can name all your animals. We'll be naming people off the Patreon list. So, for those of you who don't know, I have a Patreon. At a certain tier, I chuck everyone's name into a document, randomize them, and then those become random names I pick from. Because uh, people ask. Now, that's the next turn button. Don't press that. That would be bad. This is our island. It is slightly randomized every time. Ooh, hello. Skeletons. And that's to another island. And that's to another island. And that's to another island. I don't think we've gone to the south. No. And these are our little random furry dog cat creatures. So they have a number of different traits, as you can see here. If we click on these, you'll be like, right, that is their gene. This is their mutation. Select the gene to be mutated. You can kind of like preferentially mutate genes. Uh, just to be able to like select a little bit more without having to just go through a lot of different iterations before you find a mutation that's helpful. This is the uh, tree of their lineages. We don't have anything just yet. Our two starting are Lair, who we're going to change to Questroy. And Kirku, who is going to be Explicit Start... Explicit Styles, your name comes up a lot. Explicit Styles, there we go. So, if we just close this very briefly, we can have a look at some of their traits. So, in this view, we can see, we'll select you for this, I think. We have a speed attribute. This is three. This is three because we've got a medium body, which gives us plus one speed, and hind legs. Hind legs give you plus two speed. If we were to have a look at swimming, we've got plus one from hind legs. If we look at collecting, we collect one food when we try and collect food because we've got a velvet paw. Uh, strength, we've got a medium body, so we have one strength, we do one damage. Digging, we've got a digging paw, so we've got a velvet paw and a digging paw. And that gives us plus one to digging. Fertility, high fertility, high fertility. Six fertility, immunity to sickness, immunity A. You want to try and breed different immunities together so that you can get uh, the maximum immunity to sickness rather than getting kind of a problematic inbred issue. Part of the reason that, um, I like, it's hard to describe, but part of the reason that you pick your partner in real life, not the main reason or whatever, but it, uh, certainly a large reason what you're attracted to other people, is that they have a different uh, immune genetic makeup. Um, I'm not sure of the exact details of it, but it's something to do with the, a different makeup of their immune system. And that way, it's your body trying to get you to breed with other people with different immune makeups so that you can get the biggest spread of immunity. And here we have immunity to A. What about you? Do you have immunity to C? So we can breed them together and we'll be making decent immune, uh, immune efficient creatures rather than immunocompromised. Eyesight, we've got two. Hearing, three. Smelling, two. Camouflage, two. Silent, velvet pork is a plus two, so we've got three. Medium body, one for scentless. Cold resistance, medium body, and medium tail. And heat resistance, medium body. Okay, so those are pretty standard. What are you? Have you anything special? Claw. So we've got three damage. 
Clawless is fishing. Okay. And you can see where they are in the genome here. So if we wanted to have a look at... I know we're not even playing the game yet. I'm just talking through the theory before we really get into the game. Sorry. If you don't like me talking about science, this might not be the right channel. Uh, but right, what we have is here is the dominant and the recessive alleles. So this, everything at the top here, is dominant right now. And it's dominant because either it's matched at the bottom with the same again, so you've got two recessive, so the recessive are exhibiting. Or... Or that they're both... Hmm. Yeah, you can have both of them, right, yeah. Whereas at the bottom we have the things that are not present, but they are recessive. So if we have a look, we can see that we have, this is medium ears and medium ears. So we've got two alleles for medium ears. So we have medium ears, straight up. Over here though, we have the allele for no horns, but we've also got an allele. An allele is basically like a gene pair uh, for ram, which means we get these ram horns like sheep do, like rams do, which is plus one strength, but it's inactive. Why is it inactive? Because it's recessive. This means that if you get a recessive and a dominant, the dominant will exhibit. It will appear, whereas the recessive will be deactivated. It will hide. It will not do anything. It is still there, though. So if you breed two people together who have an inactive ram allele, there is a 1 in 4 chance that their offspring will get two ram genes, and because there's no other gene to dominate them, the recessive gene, the ram gene, will exhibit and will become active. So we could try and breed together with a ram. We also got over here, short eyesighted. That's not great. We've also got big nose here. That is good, actually. That's more smelling. Over here, medium body, medium body. Digging paw. Now, digging paws are different. Both paws will exhibit, but you'll have a paw on each hand. Uh, it's not called exhibit. There is a word. Uh, a paw will... I don't know. There is a word, and I can't remember what it is. It's really annoying me. We've got a claw, and we've got a digging paw. Over here, we've got a hind leg, and we've got a hind leg. Over here, we've got a medium tail and a swimming tail. Medium tail is one cold distance. Swimming tail is one swimming. Albinism is just a trait that makes you an albino. I don't know what they are in this game, but albinos are very unhealthy in real life because they have, I think they have immune compromisation uh, issues with eyesight and a few other things, and they really don't like sunlight particularly, but uh, I'll see how they present in game when we get one. Melanism, that must be to do with the tanning of the skin. This is your fur, we're exhibiting both. This is the eyesight. Now, in real life, for humans at least, eye colour is actually more than a dominant recessive. It's actually a very complex one. I'm pretty sure that it's way more than just two alleles. In the game, however, it's just two alleles. So we see we've got brown, but we have got a recessive for violet eyes. So we could get violet eyes on our little animals. Look at them. They fall in my mouth. Uh, we've also got white horns, brown horns. I don't think we have horns. So it doesn't matter. Beige pattern, beige pattern. Dots. Mask is inactive. I like mask a lot more than dots. Dots looks like we're kind of ill at the moment. And maybe those are the horns there. No, those are tufts of fur. I don't know. Mask is nice. Pattern shape A, pattern shape A. Medium pattern, medium pattern. Pattern density thick, pattern density medium. Okay. Normal blood clotting, no gene. Y chromosome, no gene present. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ooh! This is awesome. Okay, so on women, you get some genes that only present on the X chromosome. So women are XX chromosome. Men are XY. So if you get a gene linked to the X chromosome, it will only present in one way in men because they have only one X chromosome. So the other chromosome, the Y, is missing a leg. It's sort of X of a leg missing. So it's missing this gene. So of course it only presents with this the normal blood clotting, because it's attached to a chromosome that we don't have the other pair of. Or, quite strictly, guys, we have a uh, we have a deformed other pair of. The Y chromosome is actually just a deformed X chromosome. It's, like, I'm really 
making that ultra simple. It's a lot more complicated than that, but strictly speaking, it's about right to say that it is really, really deformed X chromosome. Uh, whereas, because they have two Xs, women have two versions of this chromosome, and they can be different. Uh, this this gene, sorry, not chromosome. Well, it's also true, they have got two X chromosomes. Uh, so you can see that we've got two blood clotting, both of them are normal, that's fine. High fertility, high fertility, immunity A, immunity B. Great, and you've got immunity C and immunity D. This is great for when we breed them, because there is no chance of any of our offspring ending up with two of the same immunities. So we've got a C and a D here. We've got an A and a B here. So we could have a A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D. But there's no way we can have an A, A, or a B, B, or a C, C, or a D, D, which is when you end up with the immunity issues. Okay, I've spent 10 minutes talking about basic biology. Let's get into the game. So this is... I don't know what this is. It's a new resource. This is our number of people. This is our food. This is the options menu. I don't know what this is. I think this is firewood or something. Or wood. It's not firewood. It's, it's like supplies or something for the nests. I guess. Clear away foliage. Small chance to find nest material. Yeah, it's nest material. So I guess we have to make our nests now. Okay. I think what we should do is we should probably mate immediately. Oh yeah! And there we go, pregnant. Rest a night on a nest to give birth. So we need to make a nest. I believe this is a nest already made here. By the way, if we wanted to click this, we can do a scent map. To be able to find food and stuff. We can also do a hearing map if we can hear predators coming. Or go back to eyesight. Alright, move there. Root. Oh yeah, we found some food. Because we could smell it. Um... Crab. Ooh, ooh, crab. I don't know if I can get into a crab because I might need a special claw for that. Because it's a shelled thing. It's uh, cracking. But either way, we've managed to breed. And hopefully we'll have ourselves a new furry next turn. So we're going to use two food. Three food, because actually we got a new uh, creature. Ooh, hello. So your name. Oh, I can't change your name here. You used to be able to change the name here. Uh, let me go into your lineage. Your name is going to be Father Prax. Hello, Father Prax. You do have claws, which is great. Very, very nice. You're male. Cold resistance, two. Heat resistance, one. Okay, let's look at your actual genome makeup. Ooh, antlers. I don't believe... Oh, actually, Questroy had the recessive for antlers. Okay. So, yeah, you've got antlers as a recessive. Short snout, which I think was Questroy's. Yeah, Questroy had two for short snout, so most of our people are going to have a short snout. Medium body. You've got a claw and a velvet paw, which is good. Chestnut. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, in which case we will get you... Oh, you can't move for the first turn. Yeah. There we go. Do some more breeding. Yeah, crabbits can only be attacked from behind. Crabbit. Oh, God. Gonna move up this way. Anything on our scent map? No. We can hear the crabbit. Right, next turn. Hey! What's attacking us? Leech! Oh no! We're being attacked by a leech! That's not good. If I practice move to there, you need to move to there. You move to there, and then you can lick to cure bleeding. Or remove parasite. We're going to remove parasite, and then we'll lick to cure bleeding. There we go. 
and the animal has been warmed up by its pack. So that's another mechanic, which is that if we get into an area where it's really, really cold, you can group the pack together to try and maintain warmth. Now, let's walk on a little bit. Ooh. We can dig here for more food. Ooh, another male. God damn it, I was hoping for a female. Uh, BD, your AC, which is brilliant if we could breathe them together. We can't. Banish from your tribe. Two young to be banished, only alphas can banish others, only omegas can be banished. Okay. That allows you to get rid of someone who you don't want in your tribe because they're not suitable breeding material, or maybe they're costing you too much food or whatever. They become wanderers then. We've got short snout, short snout, eh. velvet paw, digging paw. Nothing super awesome here. Okay. One thing we will do is we are going to have to activate our mutations. What do we want to appear from now on? We could go for a derp snout for smelling. We could try and breed some black. Affects camouflage, which is a terrible thing around here to go for black. Um, stripes. Increase camouflage when hiding in grass. That would be useful. Hemophilia. That's a bad one. Animals take high damage from blood loss. That's just bad. No. Run a leg. Good. Low fertility. Don't No. Deformed paw. Medium body. Derp snout. I'm probably going to say... Breeding just something, something pretty. There's nothing massively here that I want to breed in. Try and breed in stripes and mask pattern, which you already have some recessive for. Now, you are two pips old, so they're like, what are they called? Three days, you are 18. We could mate again, but I'm not sure if I've got the food for that, because we're actually going through quite a lot of food as it is. Probably should have waited before breeding to find food, but, uh, whoopsie. There is a bit of food up here, but it's so little. Okay. Kill the rabbit! Kill the rabbit! That's oh, getting away. Damn it! It's getting away! We need the food! We're really short on food. Oh. Hello! Owl, you're in the way. How much damage do you do with your attack? Three. Yeah! Right, collect that meat. That's good meat, right. You, dig some food over here. Nothing really can be heard. Might have to go hunt that crab. Nothing so far. We're slightly better off there. Right, 
Grab it. Ooh, Father Prax is now an adult. Go, Father Prax. I think we managed to do that because it was stealthy. The rabbit didn't see us coming. There's some roots over there. Ooh. Hello. Low chance to succeed because of low collecting ability. No. Well, I tried. How much collecting ability do we have? Collecting one. Collecting one. Collecting zero. That would be why. Okay. Ah! Bayana! Bayana! Quick! We've got the ability to fight it. It's pretty hurt. Ooh! Try and catch a fish. We failed. That is a razor fish, though, so let's just not go in the water. Ah, oh, it's so close to being dead! It's going to be able to attack us, though. Heap of meat. We're just about staying alive right now. It's not great, but it'll do. Okay, you can dig, so let's get you up here. To get that food going. And let's get you going this way, because that bush was going to be a really helpful food. Okay. We're done. Next turn. Nice collecting. Ooh, is that our bush? <gasps> More bushes! I approve. We should probably clear this area out and then make like a little nest up here. Because this is a lot of good stuff. Do we have collecting ability? We do have collecting ability. Okay. Okay, we're done. Next turn. If that Krabbit wants to, like, let me attack it from behind, that'd be grand. Right, yoink. Aha! Take that, Krabbit. Start clearing some grass around here. Where's that crabbit going? I want delicious crabbit for dinner. <coughs> Yummy! Okay, move you up. Collect some food there. Collect some food there. Oh, there's so much food around here. We need to breed. Like crazy. That is a giant stone. Yes. I have uncovered a giant stone. I feel clever. Ooh. Or is that a nest site already? We can use that as a nest. I think. Now, bear in mind that our adults are getting older. They are getting towards the end of their lifespan. <clears throat> uh, 
So we should probably start making our way over here. Ow! Oh no! I'm pretty badly hurt. That's not good. Low digging ability, so I can't really dig this up. Oh, okay. Um. Next turn. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Yeah, you're still going to die very, very shortly, though. Ah! It's an outcast! Okay, we'll come back to you in a second. We need to make some sweet love in the stream. Let's look at this outcast. Duk Vanu. Okay. Fertility is not optimal. Look at your genome, you've got a derp snout. You've got a deformed paw. You've got hemophilia. You have got big ears though. As a recessive. And you've got a K immunity which we could get. I don't think it's worth introducing you to the pack though. So what you can do is these people, these furries have basically been kicked out of their own pack. And you can welcome them into your pack to get their genes. Even if they are kind of terrible in other ways like haemophilia is certainly a pretty bad one. And you know this isn't an optimal fertility. But if you wanted some of their sort of rarer stuff like you don't have already in your gene pool, you can adopt them in and then you can take their genes by breeding with them selectively and then if anyone gets the bad stuff, you shun them forever. But I don't know if it's worth it because there's there's a 50-50 chance we'll end up with someone with haemophilia. Actually, it's less than that because if they're, if they're a female offspring, they won't have haemophilia. This is about a quarter chance. But we will end up with the haemophilic uh, gene, for certain. It might be recessive, but we'll end up with it, because this is the only one that Dukavanu can give. Being a male, you only have one gene for it, so you can only give it. So, all the offspring for one generation will have that gene, even if it is only recessive, and that will be a worrying trait to pass on. Right now, I think we're okay, we can just breed together. We might need to breed, you know, some brothers and sisters together or whatever. But, you know, you've got to do what you got to do. I could build a nest right here. build a nest. There we go. Lovely. And now we're on a nest and we're about to give birth. We're gonna collect some food. I'm gonna... We could try and kill you or something. For food? Wouldn't that be cannibalism? I don't know. I don't care. I'm gonna remove some of the forest around here so we can actually get like a good line of sight. I want to try and expose that bush, this bush and this bush. That way we've got like plenty of food we can go for. It was a bit worrying there. It was touch and go on our travel up here but now we've migrated to somewhere that's got like a lot of food supply. I'm feeling a lot better. I feel that we could uh, go for quite a while now. Anyway, I think what we'll do is we'll end this episode here. I've been Enterolysium. If you've enjoyed this episode let me know. Uh, if you want me to do more let me know. We've got a whole species to breed, and so far, we've only got four. Questroy's gonna die very, very shortly, however. Note that, uh, Questroy... No, not Questroy. Questroy's got a little while to live. Explosive Stars has been reduced because of damage. Reduction to damage by damage four days, remaining lifetime one day. At 20 years old... This is... At 20, sorry, 20 days old! I forgot how quickly they breed and grow. Uh, Explosive Stars is probably going to be very, very dead next turn. Until then, though, I've been Erelysium. Like, subscribe, and stay shiny.